All right, so I'm going off on a, on That's a serious okay. tangent That's here. That's okay. You know, we, we can maybe get one more. Maybe we can get one more down here. Well, here's this bit of idiocy. <laughs> Not written to be What's a radio hit. <laughs> so we could stop it there because it's just Beatles being completely spoiled. Yeah. All right. Here's the deal. I, I think you know it was significant that to the Beatles that Brian Epstein died, frankly, because Brian Epstein was all about keeping their energy in place, and also about giving them um, a public face that was acceptable. On, on his deathbed, he told McCartney, you know, when they were, they were about to do Sgt. Pepper when he was dying, and the, he told McCartney, do not use that album cover. Don't do it. It was, it was way radical, and, and, and Epstein was always trying to keep them in place, give them the good boy image, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened was after Epstein died, it, at the same time, they had stopped touring. Okay. All right? This is between Revolver. Uh, they were already still touring during Revolver, but they were sick of it. They had complete freedom for uh, Sgt. Peppers, okay. and they went creatively to the full envelope, as you can hear in that record. You know, they really pushed the envelope as far as they could into the psychedelic realms. It was an awesome effort. It was an awesome effort. But then something happened because the the, the Beatles. You know, it reminds me of like I had a friend. I might have told you this story, but I had a friend who was friends with Eddie Murphy. And he was going to do a surprise show. He was going to surprise show up at this comedy place, and she knew about it beforehand. Like he was going to be a surprise, and she was friends of his, you know. So we went to see him, and it was actually sad. It was actually sad. All those other comics before him were struggling to get a laugh, and then Eddie Murphy comes out, and all he has to do is go like this, mm -hmm. even just like you know, not meaning to get a joke. People just start laughing. Uh -huh. and it's the same with the Beatles in the sense that no matter what they did. It was brilliant, as far right. as the public was concerned. So they were spoiled. They, they thought, hey, we're the Beatles. We can do anything. <coughs> so that's why they, they put out garbage like this. And you know, This song is based on a series of diminished seventh chords. Very dissonant. Uh, is that pretty much the whole song? That yeah, on, pretty much. Then they go, Something like that. They just kind of and repeat a couple of chords. People would find this as musical genius, that sort of thing. They, mm -hmm. I don't know, they were, again, spoiled. And, you know, you have to understand, too, like, now people like Frank Zappa were really big, and Frank Zappa's style was utterly facetious, yeah. you know. Um, I never liked him because of his lyrics, you know. Uh, but... There's a genius there, without question. Yeah. But I think they felt they had a go-ahead to be as ridiculous as they wanted to be at that point. You know, the Beatles were always kind of ridiculous, but they'd reserve that for their Christmas records. You know, when the, you know they had those Christmas records they made, and they weren't really albums. They were just them talking and right, singing yeah. and joking <laughs> around. And that's all well and good, but, you know... Um, as far as like making that sort of thing as part of an album, I thought it was, you know, silly. 